fame comes the major responsibility and accountability on how one deals with it. And more often than not, once a company strikes fame, they often resort to indulging in scandals to make its way up the ladder to the top of the competition. That is exactly what happened with Rakuten, which has a history of hacking and many more scandalous things. But before we get into the details of that, let us take a quick look at how the company started up and how it got into the mess that it currently is in. Rakuten is often compared to Amazon. It's involved in numerous areas across Rakuten, from e-commerce and fintech to advertising, mobile and medical. First up, what is Rakuten? Rakuten is an electronic commerce and online retailing company that is based in Japan. Hiroshi Mikitani was the mastermind behind this company, and he founded it in 1997. There was immense diversity in the services that the company offered, including financial services to even communication services. In fact, many of us may not have heard of Rakuten, but heard of Viber or Kobo. Well, both these companies belong to them. Rakuten started small and gradually expanded year after year. The company was started with just six employees in a massive leap of faith. As of now, the company has a whopping 28,000 employees all across the world, and the company is found to be operating in 29 countries. But what about the company's revenue? Well, it is pretty obvious that without a hefty revenue, a company cannot and would not even think of expanding on such a massive scale. As of 2016, the company's revenues accumulated to a massive $7.2 billion. As for their operating profits, they made around $347.9 million. Rakuten has also looked into expanding its investment portfolio and has invested in quite a few events by sponsoring teams on it. For instance, the official sponsor of the Spanish football club FC Barcelona was Rakuten. Their deal lasted a solid five years and started in 2017 and ended in 2022. They are also sponsors of the Golden State Warriors of the NBA, which we must say is quite a big team. But what does this platform offer? Well, if you are a user of the platform, you would be well aware that it offers cashback offers, which is a major feature that has attracted a lot of its customers. In the past, this company was known by the term Ebates, but later changed to Rakuten, which is the current name of the company. Just like every company out there in the market, one of the biggest competitors that it has is Amazon. Both companies follow a similar pattern in terms of their functions, which has even led Rakuten to be named the Amazon of Japan. In fact, Rakuten has grown so much that it, on its own, has caused cutthroat competition to arise in the market amongst the other contenders. All this fame and profits that we see in the news and in the papers is just the facade that the company is holding up, covering a lot of dark secrets that the company is hiding. One of these dark secrets includes one of their employees leaking 5G network technology. Though the founder of the company was not all proud of this event, despite everything, he too was seen displaying unprofessional traits, including being seen partying with a group of Ukrainian women during the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And if you have been up to date with the politics of the world, you would definitely be able to know how big of an event the Russian invasion of Ukraine was. But did these events affect the company? Well, yes. It took a hard hit on the company's reputation and went from being the Amazon in Japan to the joke in the world of business in Japan, and globally too. It was forced to shut down some of its services and establishments worldwide and is now struggling to stay afloat amidst the tough competition in the software industry. Now, let us take a quick look at how this company rose in fame before it hit a mighty fall that affected the company by a large magnitude. Hiroshi Mikitani witnessed a very traumatic experience while growing up when he lost plenty of his family in an earthquake. After the incident, something in him made him realize that a 9-to-5 job is not his cup of tea and that he should be spending his time more wisely and that he should be working for his country, Japan. And in order to do so, he decided to start his business. So, he resigned from the job he had taken up at the time and started up Rakuten at the 1st of May 1997. The concept of an online shopping marketplace was fairly new, and Amazon had just entered the market only three years prior to their starting up. Despite the lead that Amazon had in terms of market experience, Rakuten caught up really quickly. But how did Rakuten beat the competition? Beating the competition is the only way to survive in the market, and in order to do that, the company decided to offer their merchants a deal in which they pay them a small fee to customize and control their stores. 
this idea was implemented and by 2000, an IPO was launched by Rakuten. When this was launched, Rakuten was a pretty developed and expanded company that had 2,300 stores and 95 million page views per month. In fact, the website of this company was one of the most viewed websites in Japan during that time. This resulted in the company's profits trickling into their accounts, and this encouraged Mikitani to expand his business further. He started up Rakuten Travel and came up with the concept of the Rakuten credit card through which its customers could use a wide variety of financial services. By 2016, somewhere around 13 million people had this card, and this made Rakuten Japan's third largest credit company. But after this rise to fame came the fall. Amazon was posing tough competition, and Mikitani went into panic mode when Amazon came to Japan. Amazon is one company that really studies its consumers, and based on that, they take action. That's what they did in Japan, and Jeff Bezos noticed that the Japanese consumers loved effective and efficient technology. Just by understanding their customer base, they were able to work on a plan that secured them a 23% share of the country's online retail market. On the other hand, Rakuten was left behind with an 18.5% share. There was a silent war between Amazon and Rakuten, and both were trying out to beat each other. During that time, Amazon launched its same-day delivery feature to its customers. They also provided an improved user interface application, as well as provided products at a lower price when compared to the prices set in the market. To gain the hearts of the Japanese customers, Amazon went a step ahead and invested in translating the products into Japanese. Rakuten was not able to keep up with the various new features that Amazon was providing and eventually lost out on becoming the largest e-commerce site in Japan. Rakuten was not doing well at all, so it was even forced to shut down its website branches in the UK, Spain, Australia, Singapore, and Malaysia. On the other hand, Amazon was booming. They went on to open their own office in Japan and were racking up revenue of more than $20 billion. Furthermore, Japan became the home of Amazon's second largest revenue generating market. Now, when a company has witnessed such a bad fall, it would do anything to get back into the game, even if it involved scandals. One of these scandals included a female employee, Jessica Wayman, who sued the company over sexual harassment. Jessica was working at the Golden State Warrior basketball team, and Rakuten had just signed a deal with them. This portrayed them as the leading sponsors and it was not good publicity for them. But there was a twist of events when Rakuten promoted Wyman to a leadership position while they were seeking to dismiss the lawsuit. Another big scandal that was on the news was Mikitani's drinking issue. A video of Mikitani dancing with a group of Ukrainian women at a nightclub blew up the internet. He did not address this issue after this happened. Instead, he took to Twitter and stated, when there are Ukrainians suffering from the war, What's wrong with having a party so that they can forget about the war? Not everyone took this comment lightly, with many who got offended by it. This is not all that Rakuten has been involved in. In 2021, a massive $9.1 million suit for damages against Rakuten was filed by SoftBank Corp. This was filed after it was found out that Rakuten had illegally used the 5G network technology information from an ex-SoftBanker employee. Due to the illegal sharing of the trade secrets, SoftBank demanded the removal of network stations in Rakuten. To top this all off, Japan's falling tech industry was another hurdle that Rakuten had to face. The number of computer science graduates was pretty low, and if we are to draw a comparison, the number of computer science graduates in 2009 was 16,000 in Japan and 63,000 in the USA. So there was a clear gap in this type of skilled manpower in Japan. Many blame the century-old education system for this scenario. The software market is booming, and by 2027, we are expecting it to become an $812 billion industry. Most of the IT work is outsourced by Japan, and if Japan wishes to succeed in the tech rat race, it will have to up its game. As for Rakuten, whether it will try to play it clean or play it dirty in the future is something only time will tell.